When you say MAGA, you're removing black Americans from the whole equation. I'm going to let you in on what these black conservatives apparently aren't telling you. Black conservatives stand on a plane that's mostly diluted and filled with extreme denial, denying generations of disenfranchisement altogether. Some groups have an array of resources made available to them, and those resources makes a huge difference. Trump needs to talk to black Americans who have no political agenda or any agenda. Each decade following slavery reveals that America wasn't great for us. I'll let Reggie Jackson emphasize my point. Coming back here is not easy. The racism when I played here, I would never want to do it, want to do it again. I, wa I walked into restaurants and they would point at me and said, can't eat here. I would go to a hotel and they say, can't stay here. We went to Charlie Finley's country club for a welcome home dinner and they pointed me out with the n-word he can't come in here i slept on their couch three four nights a week for about a two, month and a half finally they were threatened that they would burn the, our apartment complex down unless i got out because in 1963 the clan murdered four black girls children in 11 12 14 years old at a church here and never got indicted it, it was there from the Klan. Life magazine did a story on them it, it, like they were being honored. Had it not been. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Those who are returning and to the new listeners, welcome. And check out the video in its entirety. I'm sure you'll hear something that you will enjoy. It helps out the channel a lot when you listen to the full video. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Let's get on with this. Um, And then to emphasize, well, to reiterate this with reggie jackson occurred between the 60s 1960s and 80s so before you say oh my god this is so no that's part of the denial and it's still happening in certain parts of this country some more than others other areas in this country but let's get on every time i hear maga i cringe here's why First off, if Trump wants the full backing of black America, he's going to have to explain what he means by MAGA. Put your money where your mouth is. We saw a MAGA. OK, I was checking out some YouTube videos and I saw a thumbnail with. Uh, well, my sister saw a thumbnail with um, someone wearing a MAGA hat. I don't know the race or ethnicity. We just saw the big red MAGA hat. And my sister said, whenever I see this hat, whenever I see a mega hat, I think of racism. And I totally agreed with her because when Trump first started saying it, whether in 2016 or whatever, when he was first running for president, I thought, you know, make America great again. OK, Trump is old enough to know the history in this country, whether you guys want to deny it or not. It's, it's there. And I was like, why would he want to make America great again? First thing came to my mind was racism. When, you know, racist white America had the um, liberty to do whatever they wanted to black folks, whether it was destroy their communities, blow up their churches, lynch. They had the license to do whatever they wanted to, and few suffer consequences. So I'm like, is he referring to when white people, white racist people, let me be specific, I'm talking about white racist people. Is he referring to white racists who were like hardcore racist and able to do whatever they wanted to in public and private without suffering any consequences? Is this, you know, the part of America he wants to make great again? He, I, I wanted to understand that. I'm asking, can anyone deliver concrete evidence of black Americans having a great time in America. 
you can show me the decade century point out the decade century month year week or week i want facts i don't want twisted bias angry unwanted opinions i can't do a thing with your tainted opinion and neither can a court <laughs> think about it you can't win a case with opinions so facts only and i'm gonna share a little facts myself oh well, i'm gonna share some facts myself after slavery, black folks were met with insurmountable acts of barbaric violence were committed against them by white races, men and women. Um, you want to talk about black folks being violent, right? A lot of people in this country want to talk about black folks being violent. They learned from the best. After slavery, more ways were devised to keep black people in chains, ex exclude, including violence. I mean, ungodly violence committed against random black folks in random communities at will. Black people had to deal with black codes, Jim Crow, lynchings, mass incarceration, convict leasing, poll taxes, grandfather clause, literacy tests, sharecropping, and a whole list of others other discriminating factors and disenfranchisements and racism and abandonment and lack you want me to go on was that the time trump is referring to is trump including black americans when he say make america great again and even during black reconstruction in the 1800s black folks still had to fight to survive and the U.S. troops were in the South to supposedly protect them. That was the only reason they were able to um, accomplish so many great things during the Black Reconstruction because the government provided protection for Black Americans to keep the to keep white races and their violence and hatred and fear away from Black Americans. That's the only reason they were able to be successful. In 1865. After two and a half centuries of brutal enslavement, black Americans had a great hope that emancipation would finally mean real freedom and opportunity. And I know they were crushed when they found out it didn't mean that in the least. And I know a lot of people know about the black reconstruction, but this is a part of the content of this video. So just bear with me. Most formerly enslaved people in the United States were, were remarkably willing to live peacefully with those who had held them in bondage despite violence they had suffered with the degradation they had endured. Emancipated black people put aside their enslavement and embraced education, hard work, faith, and citizenship with extraordinary enthusiasm and devotion. By 1868, over 80% of black men who were eligible to vote and registered schools for black children became a priority. Rageous black leaders overcame enormous obstacles to win elections to public office. The new era of reconstruction offered great promise and could have radically changed the history of this country. However, it quickly became clear that emancipation in the United States did not mean equality for black people. The commitment to abolish chattel slavery was not accompanied by a commitment to equal rights or equal protection for black Americans. And the hope of reconstruction quickly became a nightmare of unparalleled violence and oppression. Between 1865 and 1877, thousands of black men, women, and children were killed, attacked, sexually assaulted, and terrorized by white mobs and individuals who were shielded from arrest and persecution. Prosecution. White perpetrators of lawless, random violence against formerly enslaved people were almost never held accountable. Instead, they frequently were celebrated as they are today emboldened confederate veterans and former enslavers organized a reign of terror that effectively nullified constitutional amendments designed to provide black people equal protection and the right to vote in a series of devastating decisions the united states supreme court blocked congressional efforts to protect formerly enslaved people and then it goes on and on i'll, I'll probably put the link to the article that i got this information from but 
again, as I said, when was America great for black folks, Trump? Black, I mean, Trump supporters. Like I said, I'm not, I don't want your, I don't want your damn biased, tainted, hate-filled opinion. Submit facts only or keep it to yourself. There's an article that I stumbled across. The title of the article is Why America Has Never Been Great for Black People. The first sentence in this article I'm going to read mirrors how I felt. I, I'm speaking about me, I was confused by why Trump would proudly proclaim making America great again as if he isn't aware of the ongoing severe issue for black Americans as if his father didn't perpetuate racist acts against black Americans. That is what is alleged. And it said he's guilty too. What world does a person live in or what world does a person have to live in to loudly proclaim making America great again and not acknowledge that it was never great for a group of people and other groups as well? But I'm mainly focusing on those called Black America or Black American. I ascertain that in order to have that mindset, Wanted to go back to the days that you believe were great for you and others who look like you mean you have been desensitized to all things concerning black America. And that's my final answer. You can take it or leave it. Let's get into this article. Our president's slogan. This article was written August 12, 2020. Our president's slogan, Make America Great Again, has always confused me. As a progressive person who only views the past to find ways to improve the future, I cannot phantom why President Trump wants to go backwards. When I examine this country's history, I do not find a time in which I or any other black person for this matter would have wanted to go. By studying the history of racism in the United States, I can only conclude that the president is referring to wealthy white people such as himself when he proclaims this phrase as that is the only demographic that has consistently experienced a great America. She didn't even include wealthy black folks because even wealthy black folks, doesn't matter how much money they have, they still experience racism doesn't matter how much how famous they are they still experience racism reggie jackson joseph josephine baker and other you know celebrities that were activists as well as celebrities okay i'm not even going to talk about these celebrities today most of these black celebrities today are great disappointments let's continue some make the argument that black people gained their equality with the signing of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, but racism since then is still largely present today. Those who still believe racism is virtually non-existent, live in a protected bubble, have little to no close black friends, and or have never witnessed a racist incident. As I said earlier, in order to have that mindset, you have to be desensitized about everything concerning black folks. Let's continue. To them, I say your experience concerning racism do not reflect everyone else's. Others also love to say that if black people worked harder, they could rise just as easily as everyone else. But this is untrue as well. America's history of systemic racism through housing, the criminal justice system, and policing has made it significantly more difficult for the black community to rise in the social hierarchy. And it is because of this reason that many black Americans can't simply work harder to be successful. And I wish she had added the times that we built successful community. For those who live in California, you don't even have to live in California to know what happened with Bruce's Beach, Manhattan Beach, black resort that a black family started and all the businesses and communities in our community in our country that black people started that were burnt down and we're not even going to talk about you know when they tried to pursue how long they were denied education that's why they're far by far behind when it comes to education because they were denied the basic right to read and i can go on and on let's continue 
As I review the country's long history of both obvious and not so obvious racism, I ask you to please keep an open mind and remember to use empathy. This is what the author wrote. Let's continue. The abolishment of slavery in 1865 was not the abolishment of racism. Since then, both overt and covert white supremacy have played large roles in limiting how black Americans are able to make money and become successful. As a result of these limitations, the nation's current racial wealth gap continues to be a significant obstacle for black community. For the black community, the current average net worth of a white family in America is 171,000, while the net worth is only 17,000 and 150 for that of a black family. Although many factors contribute to these numbers, it would be foolhardy to the nation not to address its history of segregation and biasness. One of the main contributors of these biases existed regarding housing. At last, we do not acknowledge much of this racism, so people continue preaching that anyone born into an unfavorable situation can work their way to the top. However, this way of thinking ignores how centuries of systemic racism have intricately Designed the top as a place for whites only. And to further and to add to her article, I did a, I did two videos talking about um, a report that was done in the '60s that pointed out that white racism was black people's problems. And then I did a video talking about how the projects that were built for white people became slums for black people because the resources were taken out of the projects. The projects weren't maintained and black people wasn't making that much money to maintain them themselves. That's why they became slums. But people want to make it seem like black people didn't want to, you know, do better. So that's why they neglect their communities. If you don't have the money to take care of your community, it's going to be neglected. And that's what happens with a lot of black community tax dollars. They pay taxes, but our taxes... Our money seems to go to other communities. And imagine how much money has been given to illegal immigrants. So it's like, you know, people, it's easy for them to point the finger at black folks, but then they don't want to go deeper. And some things you don't even have to go that, that deep. It's in your face. Let's continue. One of the most exciting benefits of owning a home is that in most neighborhoods, home equity increases over time. Essentially, owning a home is a way to accumulate more money without extra work. This seems like a favorable circumstance, especially considering that, that on average, a person's wealth originates from their home equity. However, throughout history, black people were never truly allowed to benefit from this advantage. When President Franklin D. Roosevelt took office amid the Great Depression in 1933, many families of all races were homeless across America. To combat the nationwide housing shortage, President Roosevelt set up the Public Works Administration as part of the New Deal. Uns unsurprisingly, the housing that the PWA built was only meant for middle class white families, and only some segregated housing was built for the black community and i did um a couple of maybe two or three videos talking about i think it's titled um white projects became black people slums i i talk about this basically how the federal housing administration contributed to disenfranchising black folks and the suburbs were built for white people and then when white people moved out to the suburbs, black people took over the areas that white people moved out from. And then the resources that was in those areas when white people lived there went with white people and black people were left with nothing. Okay. She goes on to say in a practice called redlining how, you know, about how the FHA refused to give insured mortgages to borrowers that they presumed was high risk and that was black folks they mapped out cities across the nation and they gave each neighborhood ratings that ra ranged from hazardous to green in the 1940s houston neighborhoods like montrose and river oaks 
5 to 12 percent non-white were considered best while places like the third ward 96 percent non-white where the arthur lives was considered hazardous even if black american managed to accumulate enough wealth to buy a home in a white neighborhood the house would never be sold to them when a white person borrowed a loan to pay for a house in a place like river oaks they were required by law not to sell to black americans and then it goes on and on and then um when black people had the money to go buy houses they would give them just super high interest rated loans or they would sell them a house in a area that was um uninhabitable so like when floods came their houses were below sea level you know how the, the, the dirty wicked games they play with black folks um i read in the video that i like i said i did last year i talk a lot in details about the look the cruel illegal acts they did to black feet black people when black people just wanted to buy a house it was it was insane let's continue in reality even 70 years after the civil war the goal was to preserve the racial hierarchy the courts did almost nothing to stop this discrimination and these practices continued years later in 1968 the fair housing act was passed allowing people from all races and backgrounds to buy any home in any neighborhood but it was far too late loans weren't being given out left and right anymore and the homes in wealthy white neighborhoods had inflated so much that black people looking to move to better districts could never afford them see how when they try to when they supposedly make something um do things to protect certain groups there's always something else in a way and if this country is not racist, why do we have to have laws to protect people and have, allow people to do things that are basics? Like buying a house is like should be a basic fundamental. Why do we have to have laws to protect us and enable us to buy a house? You see what I'm saying? But this country isn't racist, right? Okay. Further, when the need for loans rose in 1993, subprime loans, which are disadvantageous loans with high interest rates and fees, were given to people of color much more often than white people. Hispanic Americans and black Americans are 78% and 105% more likely than white people to receive subprime loans, respectively. This is further supported by a study from the National Bureau of Economic Research, which found that homeowners in high income black neighborhoods and high income black neighborhoods are twice as likely as homeowners in low income white neighborhoods to have subprime loans. This even wider wealth gap left black American communities scrambling in debt while affluent white families were able to send their kids to college with the money from their equity in their home. Even if a black student was able to work their way up and graduate college, it was likely they'd be the most successful person in their family. So they would tend to give regular deposits to their parents and relatives, making them less wealthy than a white person with the same degree and job as them. This is still a likely circumstance today. And there is somebody, I was talking to somebody that live in, lives in, no, I don't think she lives in my community. She lives in a neighboring community. She's a black woman. She told me that one day she was looking for a house, or she was just looking at houses that were, for, houses that were for sale in my community. And she, I don't know if the realtor showed her the house or it was a private sale, but they gave her a number for the house. And she happened to talk, I don't know if the woman, this white woman was her friend, somebody she, I have no idea how the conversation started, but they actually looked at the same house and they were given two separate amounts. The price of the house that the white woman was given was far, far, absurdly far less than the price the black woman was given. And let's say the houses range uh, the houses are in the in millions in the million dollar range right the black woman was given a quote of like a million certain million or two million dollars the white woman was given a quote of 
I believe, and I mean, you might say, you got to be kidding me when I tell you the number. <laughs> she was given a quote in the tens of thousands. So, you guys want to keep talking about how black people work harder, work harder. And then you make all this money and you want to go buy a house. And and these realtors, these racist realtors or racist private sellers are quoting you these absurd amounts of for their property. And then somebody else who doesn't look like you with lighter skin, they're getting, you know, getting these houses literally at a steal. You know? Let's continue. Past policies affect the present day in even more ways. Currently, the average income for black pe- for a black person is about 60%. The average of a white person is, however, due to the lack of home equity for black people, black Americans only hold about 5% of the wealth of white people. These findings explicitly show how race still plays a huge factor in housing today. With this in mind, it is clear that it has been discriminatory policies that has built this massive racial wealth gap and not the laziness that is supposedly abundant throughout poor neighborhoods. The United States spends over 80 billion annually to keep one fourth of the world's prison population behind bars. And there are still many citizens who think there's nothing wrong with our system. Many seem to have concluded that because black people are 40% of the country's prison population, while only 13% of the U.S. population, they are criminals. And again, I, I say that 13% population is a damn lie. And I'll stand by it to the end of time. I'll stand by it. I believe it's a psychological game that they are committed. This country routinely commits against black people to make you feel insignificant and and to play with your mind and think you are just so small in this country. If you believe our numbers are that low, you give you you deserve everything that comes your way. And I'm think I just think about the, the Egyptians and the Hebrews and the biblical days of um when the Hebrews were enslaved and the Pharaoh became fearful because the Hebrews kept growing in numbers. They were just so mighty. They just kept growing in numbers and, and eventually outgrew the Egyptians. So Pharaoh came up with a plan to just start wiping out the sons because he was scared that they would just become and and turn against they have so many numbers they can turn against them and i think it's still prevalent today they are so terrified that you know our of our numbers they concocted the story making it seem like we're our numbers in this country is is less it's small i think it's a lie let's continue however few seem to address the fact that a black person is on that a black person is 20% more likely to be sentenced to jail than a white person who committed the same crime. Furthermore, black people receive 20% longer sentences than white people for the same crimes. One study even found that some employers would rather hire a white convicted felon than a black innocent citizen. According to the Bureau of Justice in the 90s, black American males had a lifetime risk of 28.5% of being incarcerated compared to white males to 4.4%. This is ex- this is extremely concerning. Why are black people so disproportionately represented in our prison system? It all starts directly after slavery with the exploitation of the 13th Amendment loophole. The law states that no American should be enslaved except as punishment for a crime. And I also would like to re, um, to add, um, I did a video talking about who were the true addicts when crack was on the scene, um, was came out and discovered that white Americans were you know the crack addicts but black people were imprisoned more black people were imprisoned and given strict sentences compared to white people um who were in the drug game so the 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 facts are there people um i don't i don't i'm not going to read the whole article um i can also add the i can also add the link to this article in the description 
I routinely say to black folks, like, you're going to go with one of these po politicians, you need to get something tangible or else you're just going to be, you know, you prostituting yourself and you ain't even getting no money. Even prostitutes know, you know, get something. They just ain't on the street selling everything. And I know it's a crude example or analogy, but sometimes you got to bring it that way. A prostitute has sense enough to get some money. If she going to sell her body or he going to sell his body, they going to get something out of it. Sometimes you look at the history of black folks when it comes to voting for these parties, they always end up with nothing. You know, you got a lot of people who just despise Trump. See, Trump is not in office. So let's let's just like take Trump off the table. I'm not a Trump supporter and I don't dislike Trump either. But let's just like I keep saying that you got you dealing with people and their emotions and they're not coming with facts. So you're going to totally just keep thinking about, you know, being upset with Trump, but you're going to ignore the four years of hell black people saw in this country under Biden. So Biden, Biden can do no wrong. Only Trump. So you're going to totally ignore that Biden has been a career politician and Arthur, a bill that attacked black males and put them in, in prison for life. Some of them, some of them died in prison and, and a lot of them did minor things. And then what he's doing in this country now, open the border. Why our borders have no protection. Our black communities have no protection. So Biden gets a pass again. And then I'm going to go to Trump. Trump, you just can't come with no talking points. At this point, Trump, words don't mean anything. It's actions. So if you're trying to get back in that office and you want the, the majority support of this country, not just color, but people who are American citizens in this country and tired of what they have seen happening for four years in this country, for black folks, you want to do more than just talking. And black folks, you're going to have to demand more than just talking. And if either party is not trying to put anything on paper and solidify your loyalty, your support, don't give them anything. And then I, some, I had somebody ask me, um, so you're not going to vote? And I'm saying, I, 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 I didn't say it to her, but I'm going to say it in this video. So you're going to vote? <laughs> and then I asked, I came back and said, First of all, what I, who I choose to support and not support is none of your business. That's what I wanted to say. But, you know, on social media, they're so sensitive. I didn't say that. But I said, so you voted. Apparently, I'm assuming you voted for Biden. Biden. So what did you get? You know, what did you get? I saw a lot of people in, in 2020. They was dancing in the street. They was happy. Talking about they got the orange man out. And then, you know, I would love to see what a lot of those, and I'm not just talking about black folks. <laughs> I'm, I would like to see how a lot of those people feel today, especially those who don't have a home or don't have a job. And then see people who, who didn't put anything in this country walking around with, you know, driving brand new cars and brand new fits and getting houses and buying houses and there are two minutes in this country while you've been in this country your whole life and you have a lineage you have roots generations of your people in this country okay that's all i wanted to say put your money where your mouth is politicians if you not shut up stop pandering after the black community and you know damn well you're not gonna do anything for them stop trying to trick black folks what I mean by trick is to stop trying to trick them. <laughs> That's all I got to say, folks. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you for liking and supporting this video as it does the channel good. And I will see you in the next video. Be safe.